Dear students, welcome back. In the previous session, we have discussed about the supination twist, which is one of the function of torso metatarsal joint. Now, in this session, we are going to discuss about um, the another function that is called as pronation twist. Okay, when both the hind foot and the transverse tarsal joints are locked in supination, or locked in supination, so. Norm, uh, the adjustment of the forefoot, then the adjustment of the forefoot position must be left entirely to the tarso metatarsal joints. Okay, what happens in the hind foot uh, supination? So, here in the hind foot supination, we can find this calcaneal inversion. Okay, and um, Talar abduction or lateral rotation and also somewhat dorsiflexion we can find here and the subtalar region on the uh, naviculocuboid joint we can find uh, such kind of movements and here when this supination becomes extreme that extreme supination of the subtalar joint then what happens to this uh, uh, transverse tarsal joint? Here this transverse tarsal joint is um, unable to uh, absorb this extreme forces. So this transverse tarsal joints are also undergo supination. That means both here this subtalar as well as uh, transverse tarsal joints are locked now okay that means both are in extreme supination what is going to happen now now if this these forces are going to pass through the remaining distal joints and this force causes uh, the forefoot on the medial side to lift up so on the medial side for example this is the foot on the medial side to lift up and the lateral side which is going to uh, placed on the ground okay then what happens so that means um, it is going to extreme position uh, that means uh, aversion aversion of the forefoot also um, uh, taking place not aversion, sorry, inversion of the forefoot is taking place here. Then what will happen here? So, because on the lateral side, uh, which is present on the ground, that much of contact surface is uh, not enough to maintain the stability uh, of the body, which is um, uh, imposed that forces are imposed by the upper body that is the superimposed forces which are coming through this talar joint which is causing such kind of uh, forces um, is uh, which is carried to this lateral surface is not enough to maintain the stability of the body so then what happens so that there, there should be a compensatory movement should takes place at the torso metatarsal joint why because here the transverse tarsal joint is unable to compensate the forces so the next work is going to taking place by this torso metatarsal joints then what happens now here the first and second ray the muscles controlling the first and second ray will cause plantar flex so the medial side is lifted up isn't it so because of the muscles which are crossing um, this first and second ray causes plantar flex so what happened the first two um, metatarsals are going to plantar flex which helps in the contact of the foot on the medial side by the ground reaction force on the lateral side which causes dorsiflexion which causes 
dorsiflexion because eversion accompanies both plantar flexion of the first and second rays and dorsiflexion of the fourth and fifth rays the forefoot as as a whole undergoes pronation twist see such process is called as pronation twist now we can see in this example so pronation twist like supination twist can vary in um, some configuration although the pronation twist may provide adequate counter rotation for uh, moderate hind foot supination okay it may be inadequate to maintain forefoot stability in extreme supination okay subtalar supination results in calcaneal inversion okay with dorsiflexion and abduction of the talus as i have mentioned earlier the transverse dorsal joint will have um, little if any ability to pronate in as much as the navicular and cuboid bones are carried along with the hind foot motion so the first and second rays will plantar flex and evert whereas the fourth and fifth rays will dorsiflex and evert these motions result in a pronation twist of the tarso metatarsal joints to attempt to adjust the forefoot adequately so this is happening in the pronation twist this pronation twist and this supination twist of the torso metatarsal joints occur only only when the transverse tarsal joint function when the transverse tarsal joint when the transverse tarsal joint function is inadequate that is when the tor transverse tarsal joint is unable to counter rotate or when the transverse tarsal joint range is insufficient to compensate fully for hind foot position then only the supination twist and pronation twist are going to takes place remaining time these twists are not common okay so this is about the torso metatarsal joint function in the next session we are going to discuss about uh, other joints that is metatarsophalangeal joints in the ankylosed foot complex thank you